Hello. I'm just sitting here with a good book. Of course, the way a book works nowadays is a little bit different than it used to be. So I'm sitting here reading my book, but of course my book is digital. And you know, as students start to work with digital text more and more, what we're going to find it is that there are ways that we can take advantage of the technology in order to make that reading which is so critical to understanding science, becomes something that is far easier for students. Let's take a look. So let's take a look at some ways that technology can help you with your reading assignments. Here, I'm in Chrome, and I have an open tab, and I want to put my, my text in. So I have my text as a PDF. I'm just going to drag and drop it, and my text will actually load into Chrome. You may be wondering why I would want to do that, but I want to be able to take my text and highlight information here within that text that I have. Now, just at the beginning, I might tell my students, what I want you to do is I want you to read and take notes. And so, unfortunately, the way this is set up, I may have my student actually going through and um, they're going to be clicking over here and they get down to this chapter that we're doing and then they have to come back over here and they have to take reading notes. Well, there are some ways that you can um, make this a little bit easier and it has to do with these extensions that I have right here in the Chrome. Now, I'll show you how to get the extensions in a few moments, but let's take a look at what they might do. So, I'm gonna take these two and I'm gonna move them down here so that they're side by side and they're at the end. Now, um, one thing that you can do is you can do something called split screen. So when I click on this, it actually opens up a new tab and allows me to have two screens side by side. So in this way, I can put my notes over here and any URL that I'm, that I'm reading over on this side. And, and that would work great if, um, if, you know, if I have something that's online and I want to be able to read and take notes so that I really have two web pages open at one, at one time. There's another way that you can do this. Uh, that was called um, split screen, but I also have something called tab resize. When I click on tab resize, it actually allows me to format um, what I want. Now, the, the key with tab resize is to go is to move all of your tabs that you want to sort of resize all the way to the right. So I've done that. I move my reading notes over to the right, and I move my text. I click on the leftmost tab. Now when I click on this, what you'll see is that I can set up uh, any of these types of screens that I want. I can do all kinds of um, uh, resizing of this, and I'm going to choose the one by two. I could, and now I have my, my two pages out. So I have this reading notes that I can scroll through and my text that I can scroll through, and they're right there side by side. This would be important if you had perhaps more than two things that you wanted, or you wanted to resize it in a different way. You could set it up so you could have sort of Cornell note-taking so that you have just your open document on the right and um, other things there on the left. So I'll, I'll stretch this back out. So those two buttons, you may be saying, well, how do I get those um, extensions? Now, in Chrome, what you'll notice is I have a little apps button here. And so if you're logged in to your account, and I know I am because I have it saying school right here, and I click on my apps button, all the apps that you've downloaded are here. So I have a number of apps, but the first one that'll be there regardless is the web store. So if I click on the web store and I open it up, I can then type in like split screen. And what I'll get are extensions and you'll notice that I've added it already and the tab resize those two have been added if there was another one that I wanted I could just click on the add to Chrome button and it will uh, appear up in this row one of the nice things about Chrome is that if I go to any other computer and I log into the same account in this case it's my school Gmail account those buttons will appear. So that's a great way for students to be able to start learning how to take notes and, and make sure that their notes are accessible anywhere from a Google Doc. 
Another, another way that you can work with this is to have shared reading notes. And so with shared reading notes, when I set up a file for my students, I set it up like this. So we're going to do that same reading of chapter 9, and I highlight, and I, in this case I used a screenshot to put in, here are the sections that are in there. And I ask my students as they go through, and I assign them different sections, to um, highlight very important points and the most valuable point of the section of reading they're doing. That section could be a paragraph or it could be the entire section. So you can see I have 9-1, 9-2, 9-3. And so I'll do whatever it is that I need to in order to make sure that students have a large enough chunk to read. And then ask them to use the formatting tools here in terms of color, boldface, underlining, and things like that to identify what are those most valuable points and those very important points that are contained in their reading section. Now, you may be wondering, okay, so uh, that's, that's good, but um, what happens in terms of the, the text that I have them and the vocabulary they need? Well, what I've done is I've created um, word walls for my classroom. And so I, I picked out, for physics, I picked out the words that I think are most important, like energy, force, momentum, things like that. But what you'll notice is that I place the hashtag symbol in front of them. So my word walls are really what we call tag walls. Now we've talked in previous episodes about how to use Twitter and other social media in order to um, collect information and share information. What I want is for my students to start to get used to when they post to social media for class-related material to hashtag it the right thing. So if they're talking about energy, they should hashtag energy. So that creates our vocabulary list. But how do you get that vocabulary list? Well, I'm going to go back and I'm going to put my textbook back into Chrome. And I want to make a word cloud of the section that they're going to read. So I was talking about uh, that chapter 9 on statics and torque. So I'll click on that, and what I can do is I can highlight text in here. So what I'm going to do is just start by highlighting, and then I'm going to scroll down, and in this case I might take the whole chapter, but I'm going to stop right here for the moment. And I want them to take that whole section that they have. So they went down. I went down to the bottom. I'm highlighting everything that they need, and I'll come back up here and I want them to take torque. And so I'm going to copy it. So I'm going to use my keyboard shortcut to copy that text. And I'm going to go over to a different app that's built in to Chrome, which is called uh, Drive Word Cloud. And I can go here and I can paste all that text. And so if you look, I just hit the Command V and I hit paste. And now it will create a word cloud. And you, that word cloud at the bottom, I can change things. I make mine horizontal so I can read them. So what are the important words in that passage that students need to know? Torque, pivot, force, distance. This is where I get the vocabulary that I need for my students in order to be able to um, uh, understand that reading passage. So by giving them these types of um, tools, it allows students to start identifying what is the vocabulary that they need, how can I use that vocabulary as I make social media posts, and how can I take notes from my reading either individually or together. Now in the next article, we're going to take a look at a couple of other tools, one called Actively Learn, where you can um, uh, use reading passages and allow you to embed your assessments right inside the text so it comes right at the moment where they're reading it then they can uh, take a look at their um, their questions or their assessment and you can collect the information that you need and another one that's called um, Edpuzzle which does something similar allowing you to embed the types of information you want but this time with video and these two ways, I think, will add to how your students are learning in your classroom by providing the reading cues and questions and assessments and the viewing cues and assessments right when they're working on it. So we look forward to seeing you guys next month.